giving this chance to release. Deep breath starting to flow in and out. Take a moment to connect with our intention. The idea today that we're working on is relief. If you think of the cycle that things go through in life, oftentimes we get attached to the first part of the cycle, which is the creation, the beginning of the story. We like kind of the, the fresh excitement of something new starting. But we don't always get so excited through the end. Love the story, we love the beginning, but sometimes once we start getting toward the end, it's like we don't, you know, it's sad. We don't want it to finish. We, we want it to keep on being how it was. And so today the idea is the idea of release. And our breath teaches us that if you just inhale and you never release the breath, Obviously, we won't live very long, and we won't be helping with the cycle of life because plants need the carbon from our CO2. That's what creates all the structure of everything that we see in the plants. So by us releasing, being willing to let go of what we no longer need, that's what adds health. That's what creates the cycle, allows things to continue to circulate, and so today, if there's any emotional things, perhaps that we're working on releasing, we're going to imagine letting that release. Maybe it's different levels. Maybe it's more of having a lot of clutter. And we're going to work on releasing through the rest of the day, some of our clutter, not having to feel like we have to have so much stuff. Or maybe other levels as well. So with this idea of release, leave us on. Let's take some of our initial stretches. Arms can go all the way to the back wall. The shoulders start to go right. And shoulders left. And notice how you're using the exhales. And how they're naturally happening. Maybe when you lean to each side, that's when the exhale's going on. Maybe even allowing each exhale to be like a mantra, repeating in our minds, release. Release. And let's start to take the right knee into the chest. Give that knee a good hug. Maybe a couple of ankle circles. There's an exhale or two here to help remind us release. Whatever's holding us back here. Bring up to sky when you're ready. When I feel the really deep stretch going on, for me, that's one of the easiest times to remind myself to release. So through all the tightness on the back side of this leg, use the exhales to remind us, release. Not needing to hold on so much, so tight. Another huge inhale here. Exhale, hook in that right heel to that left side, slide the shin in. See what this right hip needs to release. Breaths flowing in and out to help remind us and encourage us to continue this journey. into the chest, and two or three breaths of release, maybe through ankle or hip flexor. Leg up to 
sky when you're ready. Each and every exhale still reminds us, release. Release. Another breath for the hamstring area. Heel back right, slide the chin in. Another huge breath flowing in. Beautiful exhale. Let the leg free out, release. So leave the legs inside the fabric. We're going to do rolling like, um, basically a roll up to stretch over our toes three times. So inhale, stretch the arms to the back wall. Exhale, lifting the arms up, engage the core, try to roll up as slowly as your core can, stretching all the way up and over to our toes. Ready for an inhale, so try to slowly roll back. Arms stretch out last. Exhale, we'll come up number two. All the way up to release over our leg. Inhale to roll back. On this third one, stay in that stretch over the legs. Well, the back muscles have a chance to release. So note, you have a little bit of control over how you're feeling this based on what you do. Hips are the heaviest point, so knees naturally bend. That can feel really nice if we're working on trying to stretch through the back muscles. If you're working a little bit more through hamstrings, perhaps you try to re-straighten the legs. Let's pay attention to what you're stretching. Make sure it's, the why is also there. I'm stretching this because this is what my body needs, not just because I ended up in this shape. Take one more breath in, a big exhale to visualize again, release. Then let's start to head to our inversion, our first one of the day. Legs start to kick free off the front, arms come all the way behind the fabric. Hook your thumbs to help push the fabric clear down the back side of the pants, the pant line. And lean halfway back to keep it locked in place right where you put it. Hands grab on for safety, legs go wide. So you tilt back, wrap the feet. Once they're wrapped, you're safe to release the arms. anything you can do to help your body in a sense of release, go ahead and take any adjustments. So it's you listening to your body, playing around, good free time.
perfectly fine to still be hanging upside down. Those that are up, let's release a little bit more through the neck. Bottom right here to really try to draw close to the right shoulder. And release into that stretch on the left side. And drop down through center. Left ear works its way to left shoulder. Drop back down to center. Try to curl the chin into the chest just a little bit more. That'll help to get through the back side of the neck. Please all effort, the head pains. Take another breath in. With the exhale, we release. From that release quality, then we start to kind of inflate ourselves back up to rise. Take a nice little twist to the front door, bunch of fabric. Shoulder to the back wall, open up, or circles around the back side of the head. right into it or if we're lifting straight maybe continue to try to see if the toes will inch the right down just a little higher take another huge inhale exhale find that release Play with vampire for a little while. So fabric on the back side of the shoulders. 
Elbows start to push the excess down to our waist. As we lay back, head should be free off the end. Feet step in. And lift up the hips to send all the excess down. You're welcome to do any variations you want to here. So if you need the feet inside, take them inside. If you want them outside, that's fine too. Hands grip up high, feet come up. High, your way up. Pressing out to each side. Helps us rise. Got it. So this is a little bit of free time for us down higher. Whatever feels good as welcome. Still upside down, maybe take the last three or four good deep breaths. Whenever we come up, whichever restorative pose you choose, seated or laying Shavasana, send a couple of easy breaths through our body. Using that exhale to think that word again, release. here we're upside down for quite a while so this is kind of your way to communicate with me stay in your releasing pose 
as long as your body still needs time, like for your ears, blood pressure, all those goodies. At any point when you start to feel like, okay, I think I would be ready to move on, only then start to let me know by sitting up. No rush to get there, especially if you just came out. So easy, deep breaths. Exhale, reminding us to release no matter where we are. Good. If you feel ready to exit, let's grab onto the fabric, bunch it up. Lift the hips right up and out. And let's send the fabric out in front of us. We're still standing, pretty much up your plumb line. Hands are gripping about as wide as, as shoulders, if not slightly wider. Upper body goes forward, hips go back. This is a place where I'll try to straighten my low back as much as possible. It's really a motion through the hips. The hips kind of like to tuck under a little bit, tailbone to under, to kind of make the stretch not as intense. So instead, think of the sitting bones as trying to point further and further and further back. Really flatten out. From that spot, you can feel how that grabs the hamstrings and pulls them just a bit longer as well. So let's bend our right elbow to point down to the ground. Left arm sways over to front door. Left arm is straight. Swing over to front door. Let your knees and feet do whatever they need to do to be comfortable. Just ease in through left shoulder, left ribs. Good. Both arms ease their way back forward, nice and straight. And then we switch. Left elbow points down, right straight arm sways to backward. That exhale to remind us to release. Arms return straight forward. The bonus breath right here. Deep inhale. Exhale. Bend the knees and roll your spine up. Right thigh steps inside. Flat hands up nice and high. Start to sink your weight forward. Slides forward, right opens behind us. Good. Both arms back up. Grip over to the left strand. Rotate left close to the left. Sink your weight forward. Maybe arms will come forward or two. together. Rip one hand on each side to face back forward. Slip down to heel. So this is really personal. Whatever you need to do to help this out, it might be sliding hands down or it might be sliding hands up and sinking weight forward. Find what will help your body right here, right in this moment. rises up. What we're going to do is hop our standing hip just a little bit further forward and then test it out. Let the leg open up to that right side. If it kind of just floats and stays at that side, your standing foot's in a good spot. If it doesn't, that's a sign, okay, I need to hop forward or back. If you're too far forward, it's going to just float back. That's too much. 
If you're um, too far back, it's gonna stay floating forward. So find that spot where it's just right at your side. When you get to that spot, both hands grab on, lunging both strands. You're gonna end up sliding the right hand down, left hand slides up. Let's open up our chest. Good. So if this is plenty of stretch for inner thigh, great. If you want to sink a little bit more weight to the side, you're, you're safe to do so. Again, if it feels like it's a weird angle, it's your standing foot that will change that. So, one more breath. Exhale, release. And return. This left strand, the left hand, sorry, stays on the left strand. So it's just that closer grip. And then this leg needs to rotate around so it comes behind us. And then right hand goes up to grab the right strand. So it ends up at a cross kind of low. So you're at a cross a little higher to switch the there you go, that'll help you up. Good. So quad stretch for a moment. Just lean your weight backwards into the fabric. By the knee pointing down like this, pulling that right leg in the quad stretch. So it's just shoulders resting on the fabric, leaning down. Weight back over standing leg. Two options. Option one, dancers close, hands like close to the shoulders, then we lean forward, kick into the fabric to lift up. Option two, splits, slide the hands up, straighten the legs back, and lean back. So you choose based on what your body wants right here. One more breath in. Exhale, let's release out. Fill that belly. Good. So you could just slip this foot out, have to stand that way, or you could try to play with the leg going as straight as possible. Run through that whole rotation all the way back forward. Maybe swinging switch to switch legs. End up at the left side. So flat hands up high, sink weight forward. A couple breaths right there. And we're going to take the twist. Right hand slips to the inside. Left hand tries to rotate. Should be twist toward back door for this one. There you go. Good. Unwind and then we open up to the normal warrior two. Right toes turn to the right, hips sink forward, maybe arms open up, normal warrior two position. And hands grab on. Weight is over standing leg. Turn the toes back forward. Slip down to ankle. Maybe we slide the hands down. Or maybe they go up to take more of a split. So it's your preference here. Heading back over standing leg. This is the point at which we have to play with that standing foot. So I like to kind of hop right under one leg and test it out. See if it kind of floats to the wrong side. If so, readjust where you're standing. Find the point where it just kind of stays right at your side. 
you get there, both hands get full. So the right hand up, left hand down. Chest nice and open. This could feel amazing, or some might want to say a little bit more weight to the side if your preference. One more breath in, out. Right hand grabs the right shin, so that's one that's closer. And then continue to send the leg behind us, and then left hand grabs the left. Good. Go ahead and just switch the grip. Go get it. Yep, that's it. The other hand. Oh, nope. That's it. Uh, you're trying to go behind the grip. Just, just grab. It's, it's okay, it'll, it'll be fine. <laughs> You're just tossed higher rather than lower, so that's good. There you go, you got it. Okay, so sink your weight back. So just a simple quad stretch. Yeah, the crossing higher won't necessarily ruin anything, but it kind of helps the balance to be lower. Good. Okay, so we're Exhale. Weight back over standing leg. This one's the choice if you can keep the grip low, just lean forward dancer. If you slide the hands high, you can take more of a split. Both legs going straight, sink the weight back. Wherever we are, take one more breath in. Weight back over standing leg. You could just slip the toes out, that's fine. Or kind of play with the leg going as straight as possible, going all the way around. Stepping it out. Take a nice little hip hang. Grab our head across bones, hands drop down. Take yourself into plumb line. If you want to stand down, down today, that's fine. If you want to go for the hip hang, try to lift the toes. Got options.
never rush to come out. So if you're still hanging and this is the spot that your body needs, absolutely, you're welcome to just stay. If you're getting to that spot where you're like, okay, I think I'm ready to be up, just lean back into the fabric. As long as it takes for your head to get the blood pressure back to normal. Another spot to communicate with me. You help me know that you're feeling good again by standing up. As long as you still need to just recover, just help me know by laying back still. Okay. So standing on your palm line, take the fabric close behind you. Hands are gonna circle around really high. So circle through the outside above the head. Loop around once, twice. And then with the second one, that's where it falls into the hands and just stay. So we're gonna do a huge hip circle to each side, nice and slow. So start with hips going all the way back. Feel the spine just kind of pulling down and away. Good. Start to rock your hips to the right. This will lean us into a right side body stretch. Eventually rock forward onto the toes. If the back bend's intense, bend the knees. Otherwise, straight legs make them deeper. Rock over to the left. And then as we go back, we can take a little break for a little bit. Come up to stand, wiggle them out. We'll take one circle to the other direction. So this one, Go just as slow as me, or if you want to go faster, I guess you can take two or three bonus so it's a little bit faster, but it'll be left first. So eventually getting to the side. Eventually maybe forward. To the right. When you come back for a moment, just give your spine that last chance to release all the effort, pull it long. Then when we stand up, release fingers. We open and close a couple of times. Look at the elbows as you walk forward. This is up to you what to do. So to, if your elbows can take more weight, you can arch the heart forward like a huge back bend. Or if that's a little bit too much for that skin of the elbows, be more like a plank, kind of easy leaning forward. Think of that quality of release while taking two more breaths. So inhale, and exhale, think the word release. One more. Good. Stand up on your own as you walk back, free off the arms. And we're coming down to kneel right under plumb line. From there, we'll sit back on the feet. And then the hands will hook the fabric, be like a headband. So you start placing the fabric about where the neck meets the base of the skull. Place it into that spot, and then kind of start to wrap the fabric around kind of by the ear area. From there, lean back, and feel free to drop hands down. Fingers on floor is a little bit more supported. Without fingers touching is less supported. The idea here is helping you release through the neck area. Leaning back into that stretch. So as much or as little support as you need is fine. Every exhale reminds us to release. Maybe three more breaths of this one.
finish all three. Release up, go forward, drop it down, maybe knees wide for a child pose. And then pull really nice to let the head drop left and right. And then next stretch we did. to the ground, easy rising up of the spine. Let's sweep the legs out in front of us. We're coming all the way to lay on our back. That will look really nice again for that neck. Just be resting like that. So once we're on our back, right leg is up to the sky. Drop the right leg directly in the middle of the fabric. And then turn the toes to the right to lock it in. Like this. Hands are on the floor by the hips, left leg leg long. We're going to do a couple of strengthening things here. So first, left leg lifts up to sky. Once it's lifted, hips lift off the ground. Hips down, and then left leg down. Good. Just like that, four more. So leg up, hips up, hips down, leg down. Another three. And two. And one. Good. Once you finish, take left leg back up to sky. Hands grab onto it to help pull it in for another little hamstring stretch. So you'll notice there is a different quality to the stretch when left leg is released, meaning, or sorry, right leg is released, meaning right hip is on the ground, versus right leg trying to push it down to lift the leg toward us. So it's a slightly different quality. Neither is necessarily right or wrong. Just play with the quality that you're going to take today, because of how it feels in your system, how the stretch feels. Breath in and out. Let the knees swivel out to the side. We're going to cradle it for a couple of moments. Just kind of rocking this left hip out. Good. Then release the toes. You can choose what to do here. This can either be an IT band stretch by letting the leg just kind of tilt over to that right side about a 45 degree angle. Or this could be more of a twist. The knees open up bend, just kind of let your spine spiral around. Whichever, whichever feels best for our body. Exhale, quality of release, and ease out. Good. Switch the legs. Left foot in. Right foot drops to hover above the ground. We're going to go for five cycles. So right leg up. Hips up. Hips down. Leg down. Repeat four. And three. Two. And one. Good. When you finish, leg back up to sky. Grab on. Straight stretch. Try to use your exhale to remind you muscle fibers to release just a little bit more. Good. Swivel the knee out to the side, cradling position, pick a couple of good drops. Have 
eventually release the toes. You can take IT down, stretch, or allow both knees to be bent as you just kind of spiral the legs all the way over to the left. Inhale, exhale, unwind out. Both legs are free out of the fabric. Like a crunch or rolling like a ball to grab on. Then planting the feet, you choose how many pull-ups to do to help us come back up to staff. Maybe just a handful, maybe quite a few. Up to you. Good. Good. So as we're getting closer to the end, we're going to take one last vampire. This one is going to be a special variation that lets us do another split option down on the ground. So one last huge stretch for our legs. So come up to the top of the feet, wave it left and right. This time though, when you turn around and hook your thumbs, just to help you out, Take more than your normal number of grips. This will help you so that you don't have to shift so much fabric down. You're already almost to the back. So maybe instead of five, take like seven, maybe eight. Now come in. Make sure you have enough fabric to completely cover shoulders. If there's a little bit extra, still do the same thing to get the extra excess down to the feet. This time, once you're laying back, keep the right leg covered inside of the blanket, so it's like in that little pocket, and left leg is free outside the blanket. Good, so right leg is gonna be, we're gonna call it closed, left foot is naked. So once we've got the legs in that shape, hands reach up, left and right, grab up sides and high. The feet stay closed and naked like that they are, hike up. Push them out into the side of the fabric, just rise upside down. Once you're upside down, good. Your closed foot comes to the space in front of your chest. Wrap it down, get it all the way to the point where the toes cannot go any further. Good, once you're there, naked foot goes all the way down to the ground. Good. So foot first. Oh, the other way, front of your chest, that way, and then naked foot to ground. Okay, if you if you want more than where your foot landed, foot can hop forward, and then seek your way this far backward as you want. One more inhale, exhale, release for the side. Good. So there's two ways to switch. You could roll in and just reset the feet. The other way is from a, kind of like a Superman position, flying upside down. You step your left foot into the little pocket, and your right foot just drops directly down the floor. So ultimately, we end up with right foot to floor and weight sinking back like splits. Close foot first, and then the naked foot all the way back. Two more breaths. Exhale, think, release. So from here, if you would love to spend just a little bit more time with the vampire version, that's fine. It is about the normal time going to Shavasana. So if you want to go 
just roll straight into Shavasana. Go ahead and lay back or lay on the floor, whatever type of Shavasana is going to be in the highest benefit for our body today. Make sure head is able to be supported if we did roll straight back to where we were. So essentially three time last movements or straight to Shavasana, depending on how your body's speaking to you. In that restful state when you get there for several minutes. So sometimes I'll use that first couple of breaths. Just return one more time back to that idea. So I exhale to release. Reminding myself again the next one. Release.
we begin to deepen our inhales. Exhales. Introduce little movements back to fingers and toes. Muscles and wrists. Stretching out before we come up. Maybe shoulders go left, right a couple of times. If you want a fetal position, feel free to roll one hip to stack on top of the other hip. Yep, let yourself curve in like a tight little ball and then arch back. Two or three good times on this side. Two or three good times on the other side. Or eventually coming up to seated position. No rush. Take your time to get there. Here with hands in front of the heart. Allow yourself to think back to that idea of release for a moment. Thinking of how so often times we cling to the story or we cling to the exciting beginning that's happening in our life. But also we realize it's important for there to be finishes, for there to be that release at the end the release of the energy of a past story, perhaps, or the release of a goal, knowing that you're heading toward a different one instead, the release of the exhale at the end of the breath. That release is just as important because it creates space for the new to happen. So with this idea to help lead us on, let's wrap up the time we shared together with the sound of oh, deep in helmet. Ooh. Light, happiness, and peace. Namaste.